praise ye to Lord again on today, right here at the Gifful God Worship Center in Alberta, Virginia. Mm -hmm. We're going to give the Lord God a hand up praise on tonight. But we are still very excited about what this is, God. We are excited about what says God on today. We want to keep everything in the mind of Christ on today. All right, so uh, we're going to get ready to get started with this lesson again tonight, but we do thank everybody for tuning in to our videos, uh, whether it be YouTube, Facebook. Uh, I think we get ready to start up some on our Instagram and a few other places. We thank everybody for tuning in and hopefully that our Bible study classes is helping you through something. Hopefully. Praise ye the Lord. But it's some glory if you have something or anyone else have something that they would like to share before we get started real quickly. Praise be to Most High God. I thank uh -huh. the Lord God that He has been with me on this day. Amen. I thank Him that He woke me up, that He carried me down the highways, that He gave me a successful endeavor on today. I thank Him for continuing to lead, guide, and direct me. I thank Him that He has opened doors. I thank Him that He has made a way. I thank Him that He's my provider. I thank him that he's my healer. I thank the Lord God that, you know, he gave me a, an analogy of myself. <laughs> and uh, sometimes I feel like I'm the Pac-Man. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm the Pac-Man because you, if you've seen the Pac-Man board, the little Pac-Man go chub, 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 chubbing along throughout the board. And then, you know, sometimes he gets his little power-ups. And then he, um, it's like, that's his excitement. So... I need my Pac-Man every day, you know, just to, you know, keep my spirits up, to keep my faith tight, you know, and to stay in a right way with the Lord God. So I thank the Lord God for what he's doing in my life. I thank him that, I thank him that I know that he know, that he know which way he wants me to go. I thank him that he knows how to unch me, how to push me, how to help me press. I thank him that he knows everything about Gloria. I thank, I thank the Lord God, and I bless him, and I thank him that he loves me. I thank him that he loves me on today, and I thank him that he is my light and my salvation. And I bless him in Jesus' name, and I say amen. Amen. Praise Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord today. Praise the Lord. All right. Um, okay. So we have anything else? So if not, I'm going to pray as is. We're going to get started. I'm going to keep y'all on tonight. Hopefully, it'll just be a short message tonight. Amen. Glory be to the Almighty God. Praise the Lord tonight. Thank you. Glorify and praise Lord God, we thank you for your Holy Ghost Spirit, Lord God, in the name of Jesus the Christ. Lord God, we praise you. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you for all that you have done, Lord God, all that you will do, Lord God, here in the future. We thank you, Lord God, that you give us the power of might, Lord God, to be able to walk through these valleys of the shadows of death. Lord God, we also thank you for your Holy Ghost Spirit, Lord God, that continue to lead, guide, and direct us, Lord God. As we get ready to walk through these tribulation and great tribulation periods, Lord God. For Lord God, you say there will come a time that has not been on the earth before. And we praise you, Lord God, that you give us the strength, the might, the power the to be able to do the wiles of the devil. And be able to deflect his fiery dots, Lord God, and put on the whole armor of God. So we thank you on tonight, Lord God, for all you have done and all that you will do. Lord God, also thank you for our children, Lord God, for one end of the earth, Lord God, over to the other. We thank you, Lord God, also for all of the saints, Lord God. All those that are and all those that will be. Lord, we just want to thank you. Continue to press 
forward to the mark of the hat calling of God on tonight. So we thank you again in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And amen. Praise. All right, so we're going to get right back into our lesson again on tonight. We're excited about Christ. We are excited, all of the saints that's listening to the sound of my voice, whether you're in the United States or anywhere on earth. We are excited about enduring to the end on today. And we praise our Lord and Savior Jesus, the Christ who came and died on the cross, that whatsoever we have need of, ask the Father who are in heaven on today. Now again, we are still um, trying to get the vision that the Lord has given unto me on today. Um, so that um, maybe this thing will come to pass here very soon. Mm -hmm. We have not received the finances yet that we asked for, but we believe in that they are on the way. And my aunt keeps saying to me, if you can believe seven billion, then believe for one billion, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is what she be saying. Amen. She said, how you know one of them people sit back and one day might wake up and decide to just send one billion dollars, knowing that they not going to be able to spend all of that money before they leave here. Mm -hmm. So my aunt has pressed this thing past what I was seeking, she calls me up and she presses it past my marks. She said, how you know what folks might want to do? You keep the faith in Jesus Christ and him only. So, on today, we're still talking about we're still trying to get this funding because we want to get to our, our next church. And the funding for that is going to help all of the, everything else that we need to do um, here in Virginia mm -hmm. and in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. We'll be able to take care of, uh, what is that, two birds with one stone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what we're going to be doing. And then I think a lot of people are going to learn things that they can do with their church mm -hmm. to be able to support people around their area. Mm -hmm. All right, so we do have a, um, I had a little message that came upon me today, or maybe the middle of the week, mm -hmm. and it was talking about when they make it obsolete. And I was talking to a person about anything that you have, anything we might know or understand on today, it might become obsolete. Meaning that the thing that you think you're going to be able to do, you may not be able to do. And that's why we keep saying while we are here, the things that we are planning to do is to continue to store our treasures in heaven. Continue to, to store your treasures in heaven. And along with storing those treasures in heaven, they have to become first 
the fruits of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. All right, so let me look at a couple of looks I had here for today. We're still in our faith message, and we I think we need to go over the um, the gifts. When we talked about the gift of faith, I think that's in First Corinthians chapter twelve, I believe. We don't have to look at it. you can look at it if you want to real quickly, because the Lord is saying there is nothing new under the sun. If something happened in your lifetime when you see a person with the gift of faith, not just the measure of faith. Because I'm like I'm saying, with what's happening to me now, and I don't know about nobody else, I'm probably relate to somebody, that my faith is steadily increasing. My faith is steadily increasing. And it may be because I keep talking about this thing about I'm going to walk on this water before I leave here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to walk on the water by what? By faith. I'm going to walk on that water. Uh-huh. That's right. Mm So, um, I want to look at this Haggai 2. I know we've been on this a couple of times. This Haggai 1 6. The yeah, Haggai 1 and 6. Haggai chapter 1, verse 6. Uh -huh. Ye have sown much, and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. Uh-huh. And this thing keep bringing me back. And like I said, there's many different pastors and ministers that might see this scripture in a different light. But it keeps bringing back to me the thing that we created here in the, in the U.S. or maybe in the earth with money. It, it was like the things that we are trying to buy with money it, it's almost like the things that God had given to us freely, you know, in the time of Adam and Eve, that all these things was given to you freely when he created the seven days. He created the seven days so everything that you needed to have, it was for your enjoyment freely. And everybody was supposed to be equal. So it's nothing that you can have that I can't have, or I can't have something you can't have. Mm -hmm. But we have set up this thing in the earth that with money, we want to look better or greater than the other person. So we have taken the thing that God has created for us to enjoy freely we have made it a cost. We have made it a cost. And see, that's part of my vision. What I'm trying to do before I leave here, if I get the finances, is to turn it back what? Equal. We want to turn it back equal. It's going to be hard. You can't just do something like that with a billion dollars. You can start the process. 
and then the rest of the people have to try to catch on to it. It's just like when I had my car lots. People came in to buy cars. I sold them the car at the cost or the price that I wanted without what? Interest. Because I'm trying to get you, why would I say a person, why would I go look at a person's credit score? We had no credit yet. Mm -hmm. Why would I go look at a person's credit score and then determine how much interest I'm going to charge you? Mm -hmm. No, if I want just a map for the car, that's what I'm charging. I don't care who you are. Mm -hmm. I'm making it all what? Equal. Equal. Mm -hmm. And if you coming in and I look at your credit and I see your credit score is bad, why am I upping your price? Mm. Right. Why am I upping your price? Why would I up the price on the person with the bad credit if I'm saying to them, they can't afford this, but I'm gonna up the price? Why? Don't make sense. Mm. So that's what we gonna be doing once we get the finances, if it's the Lord's will. But like I said, we can ask for these things, but it's still up to the, to the Lord to put in the heart of man into his spirit that they give these things that we are asking, right? And sometimes you can go out and do that. You can call 100 people. You can send out messages. You can do all kind of stuff. And I remember those times those later came to me. I know I just switched the subject. This lady came to me, and she said, John, pray for me to get a car. She said, I'm going to Farmville, and I want you to pray to this man, let me get this vehicle, because I need a vehicle. And the Holy Ghost stopped me immediately. And I said to her, I said, well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to pray for you to get a vehicle. I'm not going to say you're going to get the vehicle from the place you're going to to get the vehicle. I'm going to pray that you're going to get a vehicle. So I think a couple days later, she called me back. She said, John, I got a vehicle. Mm -hmm. Because we prayed that she get a vehicle. Mm -hmm. Then she said, guess where I got it from? Mm -hmm. I said, well, she said, right down the street from my house. <laughs> so right down the street from her house, we said, we're going to pray that God give you a vehicle. Mm -hmm. We didn't say where it's going to come from. Mm -hmm. So we prayed that we get the finances for our second church. Mm -hmm. All the thing we're doing is knocking and seeking. Mm -hmm. It ain't so much about, to me, about if a person answer or don't answer. Mm -hmm. Because the Lord going to have who he chooses mm -hmm. to do his will anyway. It don't make no difference. Right. It might come from a totally different source than what you doing. Mm -hmm. Your process is to knock and seek mm -hmm. and ask and it shall be given unto you. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing you need to do. Right. You just need to follow the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. You need to worry about where it's coming from. Right. It might come up out the ground so you don't know. Mm -hmm. You don't know what might happen. <clears throat> Give me that Haggai one more time. Haggai chapter 1 verse 6. Ye have sown much and bring in little Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. Uh -huh. And he that earneth wages, uh -huh. earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. Uh -huh. So what I'm saying to you today, because of what we understand in Scripture, What we understand in Scripture, according to the tribulation, great tribulation, of course we can go back to Revelations, Matthew, and everything, and the Lord talking about how all these things are going to change in one hour. So what I'm saying to you on today, and I know I'm preparing for these things also, but right now I'm still trying to work this vision and try to get a lot of things in place. I can't really say, you know, how this thing look, this thing look ugly. Mm -hmm. This thing look ugly. So what I'm saying, if you are fortunate enough to be able to pay off your house, put things in place, 
do whatever you can with your money while you have opportunity. Because it may come a day, from what I'm saying, where they might make it obsolete. That your money is no longer any good. It might become obsolete. And we're going to go over a few things like this in a, in a few minutes about the things that actually can come to pass. It's kind of scary, but we still have to work through these tribulations and great tribulations because the Lord talked about um, how the people going to prosper. If you're a saint following Christ, with the mark of God on your forehead. The Lord talking about how the people gonna prosper. And you could be as powerful and as rich as Pharaoh. And the Lord will still have you give the people all of your what? Substances. So they can get out of your way. So Read that for me one more time. Hey, guys, chapter one, verse six. You have so much. Hold on, Miss. You got you got your Bible. Okay. Go ahead, Miss. Hey, guys, chapter mm -hmm. one, verse uh -huh. six. You have so much, and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Uh -huh. Ye clothe you. But there is none more. Mm -hmm. And he that earned wages, earned wages to put it into a bag with coat. Uh -huh. So again, like we said on today, uh, we talked about the time, like I said, the Lord said these things are going to happen, what? In one hour. He also talked about the rich ruler that had plentiful. And he went out to build bonds because he was so rich, he thought he was at what? At ease. In those things. Lord said, no, sir. You ain't at ease with us, not what I'm about to do. So the Lord immediately called for his what? For his spirit. So we have to be careful with these things, what we're doing on today in end times. And then we also know about how Joseph, because he was warned of God about the famines, he was warned of God about the famines, so he, you know, warned Pharaoh, and they started what? Preparing. They started preparing for the famine, right? All right, so we're gonna switch gears here a little bit, and we're gonna go down here too. I said I'm gonna keep that up too, Lord, tonight, because I'm trying to prepare for some rest for tomorrow. Let's look at Matthew chapter 19 real quick. Let's look at Matthew 19, 16 real quick on today. Matthew chapter 19, uh -huh. verse 16. Mm -hmm. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, uh -huh. what good thing shall I do uh -huh. that I may have eternal life? Uh -huh. Verse 17. And he said unto him, That he might have what? that he may have eternal life. I want people to pay attention to what we're saying. When a man asks Christ what he needs to do to have eternal life and what his responses are. When he say, what do I need to do to have eternal life? And then it becomes, like I talked about before, when you have to give up everything that you have. And pick up your cross and follow Christ. Because when I first started this thing, I was even asking God, how would I even feed myself? How am I going to feed myself 
if I give everything that I have away. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying to people, give me what I'm asking before I come back with these messages and say, give me all that you have. Mm. Give me all that you have. Mm. And pick up your, send me what I'm asking, right? Mm -hmm. Before the Holy Ghost say, mm -hmm. give all that you have. Or will a man, will a man trade all that they have for a swap? Would you swap all that you have for the kingdom? Would you give up all that you have for the kingdom of God? I'll ask no question. You ain't got an answer. Okay, so let's go a little bit further, Minister. Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do? That I may have eternal life. That I may have what? Eternal life. And he said, what what thing can he do? What good thing? What good thing can he do that he might have eternal life? Like we just talked to a minister this morning, the people that he was saying that wouldn't send us the money, I'm like, I'm not even talking about them folks. So why are you bringing them up? I'm not talking about them people. It's millions of people that got the money would not give it to you. And take it right to the grave. Without storing their treasures in hell. I ain't talking about them folks. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the ones that the Lord put in the heart and the spirit of, of, of God in, mm -hmm. that the workers of man is not bad, bad but bad his spirit, says the Lord. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about them folks. Right. Don't come to me with your contradictions. I already know what's going on. Mm -hmm. I know what the Lord has me to do mm -hmm. and why He has me to do these messages. Because mm -hmm. a lot of folks sit back on a whole lot of money, ain't doing nothing with it. I ain't helping nobody. Mm -hmm. And gonna leave here and still ain't gonna do that with it. Mm -hmm. right. So what difference do it make? Mm -hmm. Give it to us, let us do what we with our vision. Yeah. Like that. that the Lord gave to us. Right. Not my personal vision. Right. <laughs> 16. Matthew <clears throat> chapter 19, verse 16. Uh-huh. And behold. One came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Uh -huh. Verse 17. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? Uh -huh. There is none good but one, uh -huh. that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Uh -huh. Verse 18. He said unto him, which? Jesus said, thou shalt do no murder. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Verse 19. Honor thy father and thy mother. And thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Uh -huh. Verse 20. The young man said unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. Uh -huh. What lack I yet? Uh -huh. Verse 21. Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, uh -huh. go and sell that thou hast, uh -huh. and give to the poor, uh -huh. and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, uh -huh. and come and follow me. Uh -huh. Keep going. Verse 22. But, when the young man heard that saying, uh -huh. he went away sorrowful. When the young man heard us say, send us what we need, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because it was much, he turned the TV station. <laughs> he, he turned off the YouTube. Mm -hmm. When he heard us say the amount, he cut the video off. <laughs> he turned the scene. He didn't want to hear what, what else he needed to do to store his treasures in heaven or be that perfect. Mm -hmm. Even though he what? Asked the question. Even though he asked the question, he wasn't ready to receive. 
what he had to do to serve the Most High God. Even though the Lord has blessed him to get to where he is, he's not thankful. Keep going, Miss. Matthew chapter 19, verse 22. Uh -huh. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Uh -huh. Verse 23. Then Jesus unto said, then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. Verse 24. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Uh -huh. So we're just saying for people to help us with what we're doing. We're not saying take on these things, because these things are hard. Because mm -hmm. I had to do it before. I had to give up everything I had, pick up my cross and follow Christ. I had to do that. I had to write out everybody's debts. Anybody owe me money for Christ, gave me a title. I had to write out everything and pick up my cross and follow Christ. That's a hard thing for people to do. So we're not saying that's what the Lord is saying to you today. Well, not to me. Hopefully he don't come back and tell me to say that to you. That's going to be even harder. And they're not going to do it because the Lord is saying right here, it is harder for a rich person to enter because they do not want to give up their possessions. You don't have to want to give up your possessions. They will be taken from you at the grave. Everything that we have, like I said, we came in the world for the dust you are and for the dust you shall return. Everything that we do here to get from God worship center gonna be passed along to who? Somebody else. And they go on with you. Right. Only thing you can do while you're here is take that that the Lord's given to you and store your treasures in heaven. Give me one more verse before we go. Matthew chapter 19, verse 25. Uh-huh. When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, who then can be saved? Verse 26. Uh -huh. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, uh -huh. but with God all things are possible. All things are possible. What he said was possible? All things. All things are possible. Even what we trying to do. All things are possible. So don't sit back and think because you're asking for something that people don't ask for that is impossible. It's impossible with what? With, with men. With men. Mm -hmm. But it's not impossible. We're going to get our second church watch. We know who it's coming from, where it's coming from. And now we're going to do a whole lot of stuff for to help people around us. It's not impossible with God. Let's look at Matthew 16 real quick. And all we're doing today is just trying to encourage the church to ask God for things that they need help with. Because he moves the spirit and the heart of man. Ask God for things. Somebody might come up to you one day and you might be thinking about, well, how to get my house paid off. Mm -hmm. Somebody might pass by you one day and say, man, I'm just going to bless somebody, pay somebody's house off today. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be the person. Mm -hmm. By what? By faith. By faith. I'm trying to get this thing in folks down. People were preaching a long time before I got here. Mm -hmm. And we still coming back today trying to go over the faith message. Mm -hmm. Trying to get people to live by faith. And not to walk by sight. Let's look at Matthew chapter 16 verse 24 real quick. Matthew chapter 16 verse 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross, and follow me. Uh -huh. Verse 25, For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, uh -huh. and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Uh -huh. Verse 26, For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world uh -huh. and lose his own soul? Uh -huh. Lose what soul? His own soul. Okay. Or what shall a man give in exchange 
for his son. Uh -huh. What should a man give in exchange? What would a man give in exchange for his life? That's going to be up to each individual person. It's just a question for all of us. Mm -hmm. Not just rich folks. It's for what would you give up for your life? For some of it might just be fornication. Some of it might be adultery. You gotta give up, you gotta give up that woman for to save your life. Everybody different. Everybody got something that they value. Yeah. Like Pastor said, whatever that thing you value, you gotta take that thing to the altar. If it's your money, you value that, you gotta take that thing to the altar. Because they ain't going with us when we leave here. Right. And we ain't got long. I'm 53 now. So I'm looking at 20, 30 many years maybe. Might get 40, might get 93 like most men I'm seeing here today. I go by a lot of people's houses now, 92, 93. I might get 50, 40, 40 maybe. Might get that. I got a lot of work to do in that time. Mm -hmm. Well, I ain't gonna get that much time. It's gonna slow down. You'll get old, you start slowing down. All right, what we have, Minister? Matthew chapter 16, verse 27. Uh -huh. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels. Uh -huh. And then he shall reward every man according to his works. Okay. Verse 28. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death uh -huh. till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Uh -huh. Let's look at Acts 5 and 3 real quick. Acts chapter 5 and 3. We just put these messages out right here from the gift from God worship center. We don't try to break everything down for you. A lot of this stuff gonna come to you in your own thinking, go in your own private closet, and uh, let the Holy Ghost do what he does, right? Acts chapter five, verse three. Uh -huh. But Peter said, Ananias, why have Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost uh -huh. and to keep back part of the price of the land? Uh -huh. Verse four, whilst it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Uh -huh. Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Uh -huh. Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. Uh -huh. Give me one more. Verse 5. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. Uh -huh. Verse 6. And the young man arose, wound him up, and carried him out, and buried him. Mm -hmm. Verse 7. And it was about the space of three hours after, when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. Verse 8. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether ye sold the land for so much. And she said, Yea, for so much. Verse 9. What is this talking about anyway? What is they talking about? We can read this for 50 years. What are they talking about? What is they referring to? You want to answer? If, if you got one, it's fine. I think, I believe that it's talking about the person, you know how like when you, like if you get your paycheck mm -hmm. and you give your tithes on it or whatever, mm -hmm. and then if you're supposed to give $100 and you give 90. And well, it's not about the spokes. It's about what you what? What you said. What you say it. Yeah. Because a lot of times the Lord will bless a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And they might have forgot about it, it could be 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. They could have asked the Lord to do a certain thing. Mm -hmm. And it happened. Mm -hmm. And they forgot about it. Mm -hmm. And they continue to get richer. Mm -hmm. But they forgot about the thing that the Lord told them that they said they was going to do if certain things happened. Mm -hmm. Like we saying, when certain things happen, what we are going to do. That's why the Lord said, once you see the vision, write it down. Make it plain. 
so you won't forget what it is. So the person that's here can get in and run with it. And not only that, so that you will know what you saying you going to do. Mm -hmm. So that you don't get thrown off from what you asking the Lord to do for you mm -hmm. and then what you going to do once these things happen. You don't want to ask the Lord to have someone to bless you with something so you can do something and then they bless you with it and you don't go do it. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to get yourself in that place. You don't care who you are. You don't care how close you is. You don't care about you the man of God or woman of God or Bible reading. You don't care about who you are. Mm -hmm. so Keep the order. It also reminds me of like, um, like when a person lies. Mm -hmm. It's like when a person lies, they have to continue the same story. Well, it can so, be, it can be, but but you know what he's saying is, you made promises to do things that you didn't do. Right. Once certain things took place. Right. It's like you saying, hey, if I get my, I tell your kids, hey, if I get this new job, I'm take your other kids with me. Mm -hmm. You get the new job, I ain't took nobody nowhere. You move on, you come. So yeah, so like he's saying, then you get the job, mm -hmm. and then wasn't it yours? So why do you have to deceive somebody on the thing that you already got? Right. Like, it's yours to do what you will with it. Uh -huh. So why be deceitful about the thing that you said you was going to do when you got the thing? Right. It's if close. That, if that makes sense. <laughs> You're close, but it just changed a little bit. So what he's saying is, what he's saying, they promise to give. If What they saying is, a person promised they asking God to help them get a certain price for their house. Mm -hmm. If they get the price for the house, they're going to do such and such for the church. Mm -hmm. They sold the house and got the amount that they prayed about, mm -hmm. but they did not give the amount to the church. Right, right. You did not give, and the, and the Lord made it happen mm -hmm. because you said you was going to give it to the church. Mm -hmm. You was going to give to the church. Mm -hmm. So that's why he made it happen. Mm -hmm. So sometimes people are, are, are pray for something, like I'm praying for something. It happens, and then I don't go get the church. I go buy some cars or houses or something or something. Mm -hmm. Do something crazy with the money. Mm -hmm. That's what they talk about. You did not do what you prayed to the Holy Ghost that you was going to do. Mm -hmm. That's why you got to, you know, write your vision, make it plain, and make sure you got the stuff written down so you don't get stowed off. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's jump real quick to Joseph to Genesis chapter 4 to 7 real quick, and we're going to end right here. The only thing we're talking about again tonight for the church is to walk by faith. We're still in our fourth part of receiving the financing we need for our second church. We are 100% sure we are going to receive. So we can move forward with what we're doing. Of course, what we're doing will cost more than that, but that's going to get us started, get us going. But like my aunt said, somebody might send you way more than that. All right, so Genesis chapter 14. 14 or 47? 47, 14. 47, 14. Genesis chapter 47, verse 14. Uh -huh. And Joseph gathered up all the money that was found in the land of Egypt. He did what? Gathered up all the money that was found in the land of Egypt. Uh, he gathered up what? All the money. All the money. Because mm -hmm. he had a what? A vision. He seen what God was about to do. So he gathered up all the money. But he needed Pharaoh's approval. So the only thing I'm saying is these things can come upon us very shortly. Get ready to go through this tribulation and great tribulation. But I was saying to the guy the other day, you could even have money buried or something and they could change the system where everything actually becomes obsolete mm -hmm. everything you get could come obsolete mm -hmm. 
or the government could do in with the Antichrist is change the time and the law. They're talking about the now, about how they want to change your, uh, what's some things they call? The, the Bitcoin? No, the, uh, the rights things, they set up the amendments. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're talking about changing the amendments or get rid of them. Mm. Yeah, they're talking about the now, you hear them say bits and pieces. Mm. So anybody that have anything, that's why I'm saying if you have something, you need to try to secure what's around you. Mm. You know, make sure your house paid for me, you pay your taxes over a few years or so. But the Lord still said to me, that's not going to help you. Right. Because your, 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 your uh, food going out. Mm -hmm. So you still have to do some planting and mm -hmm. you have to do some things. So mm -hmm. I have a big house, mm -hmm. I have a nice car. Mm -hmm. He said, this thing going to be worse than whatever on earth before. Mm -hmm. And the last time I remember about the Great Depression, they didn't need vehicles. Mm -hmm. They had to cut them up into buckets. Mm -hmm. So this is what we about to go do. Mm -hmm. So why you have an opportunity? That's why I'm trying to get all this stuff done and try to make a light shine in both of these places, in both of these churches. Mm -hmm. Let the folks know that the Lord is still in the midst of all your Walmarts, all your Targets, all your restaurants. All your little skyscraper uh, franchise names you see everywhere you go, you don't see nothing representing Christ nowhere. Right. That's what we're trying to put up. We want our light shining in the midst of all of what? The chaos. In the midst of all the chaos, we want the church light shining. Because it's going to give people what? Hope. Hope. <laughs> and confidence that the Lord is still in the midst. Right? All right, so let's do the 14 one more time. Genesis chapter 47, verse 14. Uh-huh. And Joseph gathered, gathered up all the money that was found in the land of Egypt uh -huh. and in the land of Canaan uh -huh. for the corn which they bought. And Joseph brought the money into Pharaoh's house. Uh -huh. Verse 15. In these days, that will represent the system. The Antichrist system. It's going to represent the system. Even if they go and do a uh, digital uh, money system or something. I don't know what they're going to do. They might take your money. Whatever bills you think you got, they might just take it. And then you wish they had sent that on the way to us so we could do what we was doing. <laughs> then you can't then you can't store it up and sit and do nothing now. <laughs> they don't took it. People send money overseas, guess what? If they take it, what you gonna do? Go in and get it. <laughs> you don't do nothing. <laughs> just out. <laughs> Read the next verse, please. Genesis chapter 47, verse 15. And when money failed in the land of Egypt. And when what? And when money failed. The money did what? Failed. The money failed. The money failed in Egypt. No matter how much money you get, the money what? Failed. Fail. Becomes what? Obsolete. When they make what you have obsolete in the USA, your money failed. I'm mean, getting scared about this thing. I want to get these church. I want to put them up and try to do as much as we can while we can. I'm already seeing as a possibility. I might not, might be a one, can't make it to the island. Can't come cross. They got what? Martial law. You ain't going back cross. Who you think you are? You ain't going across. You got a helicopter, airplane, okay. No flights. You ain't going nowhere. Put that thing on the ground wherever you at. Wherever you at, you fly your plane, they're going to put you on the ground right there. That's where you at. What? 
four, four or five states from home. In a what? In a great big church building. Or sitting on the ground at a football stadium somewhere. Rich. Can't move. Just like what happened in New Orleans when they had that big flood. Nobody could do what? Nothing. Can't how rich she was. That's what we get ready to go through. Read again, Minister. Genesis chapter 47, verse 15. And when money failed in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came unto Joseph and said, Give us bread. Uh huh. What they want? Bread. Just want to eat now. Uh -huh. I don't think you even want to do it, just eat. That's what I'm saying. Take care of all your stuff where you have. Try to prepare. The Lord said the people not thankful that they got food, clothing, and shelter. That's all you're going to want after a while. Food, clothing, and shelter. It's all your heart will design. Think about anything else. Read for a moment to have this full though. Genesis chapter 47, verse 15. And when money failed in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, and all Egyptians came, all the Egyptians came unto Joseph and uh -huh. said, Give us bread. For why should we die in thy presence? Uh -huh. For the money fell. Uh -huh. Same thing Esau and Jacob. Esau came to Jacob and said the same thing. He was going to give up what? His birthright. Because he knew that if he did not eat, if he did not eat the thing that he valued was going to be taken after what? His what? Death. The thing that you value. It's going to be taken at your death. Put the thing on the altar. And it ain't like you can't, you can't do nothing about it. <laughs> you gone. <laughs> can't do nothing. You gone. Everything is in the hands of the Most High God. Mm -hmm. All that we need to do is have faith in God. And Anything we have need of or ask the Father who is in heaven, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, will do a fight. Any questions on today? All right, that's going to conclude for us on today. Let me say it again. Keep your faith in Christ. Where two or three is gathered in my name. He didn't say that you had to have 10,000 folks to be acknowledged. He didn't say you had to have 1,500 folks to be acknowledged. He said where two or three is gathered in my name. And that's why we did these places. Because like I said, it might become a time when we have these places just for to do what? Feed folks. Just for make sure you eat. It's scary. I hope it ain't a representation of how many people going to the kingdom. Because mm. the Lord do a lot of stuff for her, for us here, being two or three, mm. and he in the midst. So we know the Lord working here. I'm praying he working everywhere else too. But we know we got him here. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise Monday, Ms. Green. Prayer offer. God, thank you, Father God. We bless you and thank you in Jesus' name, Lord God, for all that you do, all you've done, all you will do, Lord God, how you continue in this ministry, Lord God. Amen. How you continue in the body of Christ, Lord God. Father God, we ask that you will bless every hand that had to give on this day, Lord God, that you will bless their bodies, their spirits, their minds, their soul, their household, Lord God, their families, Lord God, everything that's concerning them, Lord God. Bless your people, Lord God. We thank you that you do bless us, Lord God, and you keep us. And we thank for, for you in Jesus' name. And we say amen. Praise you.
Nay unto him that's able to keep us from falling. Nay unto him that's able to provide anything our hearts desire. Thank you, Lord God. And unto him that keeps his mighty hand upon our children from one end of the earth over to the other. Thank you, Lord God. And unto him that doeth all, knoweth all, mm -hmm. and seeth all. We just continue to thank him on today that for they said we had 10,000 tongues. Mm -hmm. We could not say, God, thank you enough. Thank you, Lord God. But I just want to continue to thank you, Lord God, and continue to bless you, Lord God. We ask now, Lord God, to keep your mighty hand, and Lord God, upon all of the saints, Lord God, mm -hmm. from one end of the earth, Lord God, over to the other. Thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, also for keeping your mighty hand upon our children, Lord God, mm -hmm. our nieces, our nephews, our grandmas, our grandpa. Even though, Lord God, that might be going through some type of sickness or in bad health. Thank we ask you right now, Lord God, for only you can do these things, Lord God. You said to put you in remembrance, Lord God, of your word. Mm -hmm. That if we will humble ourselves and pray, mm -hmm. that you will heal from heaven. Thank so you, we Lord. ask you right now, Lord God, on the behalf of the saints, Lord God, that's crying out to you on today. That we ask it right now, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, name of that Jesus. you move on their behalf, Lord God. Behalf, and we Lord praise you and we thank you, Lord we God. You. And we continue to lift you up, glorify you, Lord God. Lord God. In the name of Jesus the Christ. Jesus, and we thank you also, Lord God, for your Holy Ghost Spirit that continues to lead, guide, and direct us, Lord God. Each and every day, as we go, whichever direction you might lead us, Lord God, we want to continue to thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' Amen. name. Thank you, Lord God. Bless you, Lord. Dismiss us, Drew.